Today we're going to look at one of Ramanujan's famous trigonometric identities, and this one involves cube roots and the angle 2 pi over 7. And in fact, over here on the right hand side, we have nested cube groups, roots, which I think is pretty nice. Okay, so let's look at the identity. We have the cube root of cosine 2 pi over 7 plus the cube root of cosine 4 pi over 7 plus the cube root of cosine 6 pi over 7 equals the cube root of 5 minus 3 times the cube root of 7 over 2. And I'd like to point out that my solution here, or my derivation of this identity, is very much based on an answer from a math stack ex exchange post. So you can find the information about the post right there. Okay, so let's maybe see how we would get started. Well, instead of looking at the cube root of the cosine of all of these values, we'd maybe like to look at all of those values just on their own. And so we'll do that by introducing some notation. So let's set alpha equal to the cube root of the cosine of 2 pi over 7. And then we'll set beta equal to the cube root of the cosine of 4 pi over 7. And finally, gamma equal to the cube root of the cosine of 6 pi over 7. Great. But notice that means that alpha cubed is equal to cosine 2 pi over 7. Beta cubed is equal to cosine 4 pi over 7. And finally, obviously, gamma cubed is equal to the cosine of 6 pi over 7. Now, from here, what we'd like to do is find a minimal polynomial for cosine of 2 pi over 7, which in turn will be the minimal polynomial of cosine 4 pi over 7 and cosine 6 pi over 7. But we won't quite check that. I'll leave that as something for you guys to work with. Okay, so let's maybe box this. We're going to focus on this guy right here, the cosine of 2 pi over 7, and we're going to look for its minimal polynomial. And we'll do that by jumping into complex numbers. So let's maybe make the following observation. So e to the i 2 pi over 7 is a root of, well, it's a root of z to the 7 minus 1. But it's definitely not equal to 1. So it's equal to the bit that's left over after you factor out z minus 1. And so that'll be the polynomial z to the 6 plus z to the 5 plus z to the 4 plus z cubed plus z squared plus z plus 1. So that's a degree 6 polynomial. Again, that's what's left over after you factor out a z minus 1 from z to the 7 minus 1. OK, now that we've got this e to the i 2 pi over 7, maybe we can write cosine of 2 pi over 7 in terms of this. And in fact, we can using Euler's formula. So let's maybe do that now. We can write cosine of 2 pi over 7 as e to the i 2 pi over 7 um, plus e to the minus i 2 pi over 7 over 2. And again, like I said, that's from Euler's formula. So notice if we set z equal to this e to the i 2 pi over 7 and plug it in here, we get 0. So that motivates us to set these two things equal to z, which gives us some sort of like nice substitution for this cosine thing. And that substitution will be as follows. So let's define x to be equal to z plus z inverse over 2. Great. And like I said, that's motivated by this value here being set equal to z, and thus this is z inverse based off of the fact that this guy right here is a root of that six degree polynomial. Okay, so now if x is equal to that, what do we get when we square x? Well, if we square x, we'll get one quarter out front, and then we'll have z squared plus z to the minus two plus two. And so that two comes from the cross term of multiplying z times z inverse. 
And then furthermore, we can take x cubed, and that's going to be 1 eighth. We'll have z cubed plus z to the minus 3 plus 3z plus 3z to the minus 1. Again, that's just from cubing this thing right here. But notice that gives us some sort of expression for x, x squared, and x cubed in terms of these z's and z inverses just up to z cubed. But over here, we have something up to z to the sixth power. So somehow we need to change this polynomial right here to one that involves only cubic powers of z. And we can do that just by multiplying this whole thing by z to the minus 3 or dividing by z cubed. So let's see what that leads us with. That'll leave us with z cubed. That's what we get when we multiply this z to the 6 by z to the minus 3. Then I'm going to reorder things a little bit, plus z to the minus 3. That's what we get from this number 1. And then z to the 5th will give us z squared plus z to the minus 2. That's what we get from multiplying z. And then plus z plus z to the minus 1. So that's what we get from z to the 4th and z squared. And then finally, plus 1. Okay. So just to reiterate, that's what we get from multiplying this thing by z to the minus 3. And now it's just a matter of taking these expressions which we found over here for x cubed, x squared, and x, and maybe solving them for z plus z inverse, z to the 2 plus z to the minus 2, and z cubed plus z to the minus 3. And I'll leave some of that work for you, but what I'll notice is that this one right here is like quite easy. We just have z plus z inverse equals 2x, which means we can take this z plus z inverse over here and write it with 2x. And then furthermore, from this guy right here, we see that z squared plus z to the minus 2 can be written as let's see, 4x squared minus 2. So 4x squared minus 2. So this guy over here can be rewritten with 4x squared minus 2. And then we can do the same kind of thing down here with x cubed, except in that case, we'll have this 3 times z plus z inverse, which we'll have to substitute in right here. So that's not too bad. Okay, so when all is said and done, that gives us a new cubic polynomial in our variable x. And that new cubic polynomial looks like this. 8x cubed plus 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So like I said, I'll let you guys check all the details for that. And since x over here was written in terms of z and z inverse, if we set x equal to cosine 2 pi over 7, that's like having z equal to this e to the i 2 pi over 7 and z inverse is that, which means we get this, or this z is a root for this polynomial, but we've just shown that that polynomial is equivalent to our x polynomial. So that tells us that this guy has as a root the cosine of 2 pi over 7. And then I won't work out the details for this, but you can play the same sort of game for the cosine of 4 pi over 7 and 6 pi over 7 to see that the roots are actually all of those. So we've got a cubic polynomial, which means we can have up to three different roots, and we have each of those roots. Okay, well, we might want to change this to a monic polynomial, and we can do that by just uh, dividing out by 8, so that gives us x cubed plus 1 half x squared minus 1 half x minus 1 over 8. So that'll have the same roots, but writing those roots in terms of our alpha cubed, beta cubed, and gamma cubed tells us how we can factor this. This is x minus alpha cubed, x minus beta cubed, times x minus gamma cubed.
Great. That's like a really good place to pick up the next step from, which we'll do on the next board. So far, we've just determined that x minus alpha cubed times x minus beta cubed times x minus gamma cubed was equal to x cubed plus half x squared minus half x plus one eighth. And of course, that's where alpha is this cube root of cosine of two pi over seven, beta is this term, and gamma is this term. And so from here, we're going to use something called Vieta's formula. And so Vieta's formula is a well-known kind of math contest formula, as well as just an algebraic formula, which relates the roots of a polynomial with the coefficients of the like associated generally monic polynomial. And so that allows us to write down the following formulas. So we've got alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed will be equal to minus one half. So we get this one from multiplying out the left hand side and taking the coefficient of x squared. So that means we have x times x times minus gamma cubed. Um, x times x times minus alpha cubed and so on and so forth. That's why this sign changes. And then we can do the same kind of thing for the coefficient of x and the constant term. And that'll give us alpha times beta cubed plus beta times gamma cubed plus alpha times gamma cubed equals minus half. And also alpha times beta times gamma all cubed equals one eighth, which means if we take the cube root, we just get one half. So that's a nice actual simplification there. Okay, so now from here, what we'd like to do is somehow use these three equations here to produce some sort of equation for alpha plus beta plus gamma equals question mark. Well, it should be equal to that thing over there. So if we can show that alpha plus beta plus gamma is the root of a suitable polynomial, which we can solve a different way to get this, then we have done it. And so I'm going to introduce some more notation to kind of make this work. I'll set u equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma. And then we'll also need something which I'll call v, which is alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. So that's like the version of this without cubes. And we're not going to need anything with the alpha beta gamma because it's easy to understand what the cube and the non-cube version of that is because there's no sum in there. Okay, so now that we've got this u and this v. Okay, so now rewriting these equations using this u and v, and this actually involves like quite a bit of calculation that's a little bit meticulous, but I'll just kind of look at the end. We'll have u cubed minus three times uv plus two equals zero. And we'll also have four v cubed and then minus 6uv plus 5 equals 0. So it might seem a little mysterious how we got from here to there, but the thing that we do is take these expressions right here and multiply them out. So notice u cubed will be equal to alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed plus 2 times alpha beta plus beta gamma plus alpha gamma. So that's just from the trinomial expansion. But let's look at this. We know that alpha cubed plus beta cubed plus gamma cubed is minus half. And then we know this guy right here is equal to V, just by our definition of V. And then we can do something similar for V cubed and get, like I said, a similar expression, which now will involve this second one right here, as well as some other terms. Anyway, you can play around with expressions like this until you get this system of polynomial equations in these two new variables, u and v. But now we'd like to push these together to a single polynomial equation. That's actually not too hard to do. We can take this 
first one and easily solve it for v. So let's see what that's going to give us. That'll give us v equals, so u cubed plus 2 all over 3u. So like I said, that's just from putting these things together. Great. Now you can take this value for v and plug it into this second equation. So that's going to give us 4 times u cubed plus 2 over 3u, all cubed, minus 6u times, let's see what we have here, u cubed plus 2 over 3u plus 5 equals 0. So some stuff's going to cancel here, but what are we going to be left with? So this 6u is going to cancel this 3u down to a 2. And then we're going to have something like 4 over 27u cubed out front here. And then this is going to cube to something like u to the 9th plus 6u to the 6th plus 12u cubed plus 8. So I think it's something like that. And then we'll have minus 2u cubed minus... 4 plus 5 equals 0. So that's pretty gnarly, but that's kind of the here and there of that. Now from here, we'd probably like to multiply by 27u cubed to turn this into a polynomial equation. And that's going to give us the following ninth degree polynomial equation. So we'll have 4u to the 9 minus... 30u to the 6 plus 75u cubed and then plus 32 equals 0. So that is a ninth degree polynomial equation, but notice it's a cubic polynomial equation if we think about the variable being u cubed, which is good news because if we could solve this thing for u, then we have our value of alpha plus beta plus gamma. Okay, so let's Keep going. So far, we've set u equal to the right-hand side of this expression. So if we can also show that u is equal to the left-hand side of this expression, then we're good to go. Let's recall we also know that u satisfies the following ninth-degree polynomial. But that ninth-degree polynomial is really a cubic polynomial in the variable u cubed. So that motivates the substitution y equals u cubed, which now gives us this cubic polynomial. So we have 4y cubed minus 30y squared plus 75y plus 32. And now there's like a pretty nice trick. And that trick is to make a linear substitution for y. And so this only works in this really, really nice case. And of course, there's something deeper going on here, which we won't go into. But that deeper thing going on is what makes this like linear substitution make everything kind of simplify. And so we're going to set y equal to 5 over 2 minus t. So that's going to be our substitution. So plugging that in here will actually give us a bunch of simplification. So I won't work out all of the details, but let's notice, for instance, that y squared will be equal to, let's see, t squared minus 5t and then plus 25 over 4. So that's y squared. And then you can similarly calculate y cubed just by multiplying that out. Then substituting into here, that gives us a really simple equation. And that simple equation is 4 um, t cubed equals, let's see, 189 over 2. Okay. But we know that tells us that t cubed is equal to 189 over 8, which means that t is equal to 3 times the cube root of 7 over 2. And that's because 189 is in fact equal to 27 times 7. Okay, but now if t is equal to that, that means that y is equal to 5 halves minus that. So that's going to give us 5 minus 3 times the cube root of 7 over 2. But let's recall that y was equal to u cubed. So that tells us that u cubed is equal to this, and thus u is equal to the cube root of this. 
So we have the cube root of five minus three times the cube root of seven over two. But the big picture here is that u was the left-hand side of this inequality, which I realize I said was the right-hand side. I got my left and my right mixed up. Uh, post in the comments if you already called me out on that. And thus, we've shown that u is also equal to the right-hand side of this, thus finishing this identity. And that's a good place to stop.